First question is from Cyprian Bolin. How often do you use supersets and what muscle groups do you use them with? Are there any groups that are better suited to supersetting or is it good to mix them around every now and then? Oh, great question. You know, supersets have been a bodybuilding staple for a quite a long time. I think they achieved a lot of their popularity in the 70s during the golden era of bodybuilding. This is when you had uh, like Arnold Schwarzenegger was dominating uh, that whole scene. So the idea behind a superset essentially is you do two exercises back to back. That's the right. the breakdown of a superset. Cut the rest in between. But there's there's a lot of value in, in different ways to do supersets. So that's like generally what they mean. But I like to personally use supersets as ways to combine a compound movement with an isolation movement to target a particular body part. So a good example would be supersetting bench press with flies, with flies right? Yep. So I did the bench press first. That's my compound movement. Then I go to flies to really hammer out and squeeze the pecs or reverse, do the flies first, then do the bench press. That's known as a pre-exhaust superset. The, the main benefits I see of them, honestly, it all boils down to getting an insane pump, yeah. getting lots of blood uh, to the muscle. I, I, it's a tool. I think there's a place for it. Uh, I think it's a great uh, a great way to build volume into your program, uh, but I also think that you should scale up to it. So if I'm if I'm following like a a strength based program where I'm running like a five by five, I want to run that and I want to slowly start to add volume. When I get to a place where in an hour workout I'm I'm starting to max out, like I'm moving from exercise to exercise. I've been doing that over the last six months. This is where I like to start to add things like supersets so I can build more volume into the workout versus I'm a new lifter or I haven't been lifting for a long time. I just start getting into it. I'm listening to Mind Pump. They talk about the benefits of supersets. So all of a sudden, I'm throwing supersets into my workout. It's an advanced technique. Mm -hmm. And it also it lends itself better with hypertrophy training. So, you know, because you're going to fatigue the muscle, you're going to get this massive pump. If I'm strength training uh, in, like I said, like a five by five type of block, uh, I see less value in in doing supersets. I see more value when I move into the 10 to 15 rep range and I'm chasing the pump, I'm chasing hypertrophy, then it makes more sense to throw supersets into the routine. You can abuse them just like any other thing. I, I see this is the, the the bad side is I've seen uh, people who all, all they're focused on is hypertrophy. All they're focused on mm -hmm. is body sculpting. And that's all the routine consists of. I was it's, guilty of it's this. It's addictive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was guilty of this. And I, I think so are a lot of uh, bodybuilders. Yeah, like, so, you won't get results. You won't continuously get results from them. Yeah, and it, it gives you this artificial feeling that you're getting results because you get a massive pump. Yeah, you get all aired up. And so you think that this is like the go-to every time. I want to walk out of the gym feeling nice and big and puffed up. And, the, you know, it provides that that feeling for sure. I've also used it too. Like if you want to go like biceps to triceps or you want to yes. do something like that in terms of not hitting the same muscle group, but now you're hitting opposing muscle groups, another valid way to Yeah, now the, why, the reason why I like to do that is because of the feel. I, I don't know if it necessarily has any value value it makes you look big on instagram it does <laughs> yeah. it does before i do any pictures i do lots of <laughs> guilty adam yeah. called me out yeah, yeah, yeah. uh no but but seriously so arnold loved doing a, a a chest to back superset so he would do this one he was famous for it he would go bench press to pull-ups so lats to chest now i don't know if there's any necessarily any muscle building benefits but there's a, a great feel benefit and i'll make this argument all day long the feel you get from your workouts contributes to your progress as well. If I start to enjoy the feeling of, of my workout and what I'm doing, I'm probably going to have better workouts. I'm probably going to have better focus. Here's the other thing with supersets. They taught me how to prime my body before I even knew what priming was all about. I'll give you, I'll tell you guys a story. When I was a kid working out, one of the hardest body parts for me to feel early on was my lats. It was really hard. I would do pull-ups and I would do rows and I would just get a pump in my biceps and my forearms. And it was really hard for me to feel anything happening in my lats. Part of it was because they were underdeveloped. I was a kid. The other part of it is I had no idea how to connect to them because they're on the back of my body, mm -hmm. don't know what they're supposed to feel like. So then I read this, this book by Mike Menser called Heavy Duty. And he talks about uh, pre-exhaust supersets where you do an isolation movement for a body part and then you go to a compound movement. And the, the whole concept of it was you pre-exhaust, for example, we'll use the bench press fly example. When I do a bench press and I go to, let's say I go to failure, the muscles that may fail before the target muscle or the chest, that might get in the way of me progressing. If I fail on bench press, maybe it's my shoulders and my triceps that give out, 
not my chest. So how do I maximize the effect on my chest? I know I could pre-exhaust the chest by doing flies first, then going to the bench press. Now I'm going to pre-exhaust. Now they've done studies on this and there's pre-exhaust. There's some debate as to whether or not there's, that, that there's any value to what I just said, mm. but there is value to this. So I couldn't feel my lats. I just say there is if you feel it. Yes, mm. yes. So I, I read this book. I did uh, lat. I did pullovers, dumbbell pullovers first. Isolates lats. Then I did pull-ups. First time in my f- in my life, I felt my lats. I had a pump. From that day forward, I could connect to my lats when well, I did back exercise. If you've exercise. been training for a long time, you know this is like a great secret. If you get a client that uh, wants to develop their butt, right? Mm-hmm. Common uh, common one that you get as a trainer. And they they don't feel it though. Oh, Adam! Every time I do squats, every time I do deadlifts, I feel it in my quads, I feel it in my hamstrings, but my butt just doesn't get pumped. It doesn't get sore. So one of the best things that you can do with a client like that, because we know we've talked about this before, that squats and deadlifts are some of the best movements that you can do to build the butt. The problem with that is getting the butt to move and work and fire the way you want it to if you if you're not connected or you can't feel it. So. I'll take a client over and we'll do floor bridges, single leg or both feet on the ground and actually get a pump in their butt or a pre-exhaust like Sal's talking about and then go over and do squats. Now they feel it. And they feel it more. Whether the the studies show that they build more of a butt from that or not, doesn't matter if the client can connect and feel the butt better, it's going to benefit them squatting if they're trying to develop their butt. Yeah, because then you start, what ends up happening is now you squat and you can feel the glutes and so you squat a little bit differently. Now you're activating the target muscle better. I think that has tremendous value. Unfortunately, the studies that that, that do that, Adam, they don't do them long enough. Yeah. I think you need to follow people for a year with pre-exhaust techniques, and that's when you're going to see. It only makes sense, man. If you gain access now to that pathway, you can recruit, you know, more muscle fibers at, at that point. Like, there's got to be a way to to you know to to, to study and prove the the fact that like once we actually can highlight and activate you know certain muscle groups, like now like having that access, I can like increase that totally. And so, where will you find supersets in our programs? You'll find supersets in our body shaping, body building. Uh, type of routines, you know, the routines that really focus on when you know when you're trying to shape and sculpt right. and build aesthetic your body. split PED so, all have them. Yeah, map split, map split has lots of supersets towards the end because the, typically the way our programs work is there's different phases and different focuses. When you're focusing on strength and building strength, which also is very important, mm. no supersets. Yeah. But when you get to the end, now we're progressing to these supersets, and you'll find the last phase is full of these pump inducing. Supersets, and we do it that way, man. The results are just are just crazy. 